Welcome back to Sacred Success Salon, where we are having amazing conversations with our guest experts about where we are in, as humanity, where we're going, and how to prepare to download the solutions and technologies as the coaches, creators, and healers, and the leaders of the new earth. My name is Anna Kowalska. I am your host, and I'm really delighted to welcome to the salon today, Diana Mikas. Welcome, Diana. Hi, thank you. Hi, Anna. I'm so, I'm so pleased to be here. Thank today. you. I am already excited because our conversation started already. We are like, you are entering into the middle of the flow of very juicy conversation. So let me just say a few things about Diana and you can read more about who she is and the work she does below the video. But just so you know who you're listening to, Diana is the author of Self Love Mastery Series. You can find it on Amazon. She's a host of Higher Love Podcast. I love it. As a trauma-informed life coach, she's on a mission to empower women to create the life of their dreams. And don't we all want to live the life of our dreams? So Diana, right as we were preparing and grounding for our interview for this conversation, we went into this beautiful part of your work that you do. And it has to do with trauma and everything that we experience in a utero. And when you said it, my whole body just said, that's where we get to go. So I know you have vast experience and your modalities are just endless. Yet the work that you are doing right now and specifically the work that you are discovering and doing with your clients about what happens in the utero, we haven't covered that in a salon yet. And I think it's really, really important for us to address uh, for where we are going. Because unless we get to that like you call like you said the core there is not much else that we can that we can create so let's talk about it <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to talk about oh my goodness thank you anna i mean uh yeah trauma is it it's a hot topic everyone's talking about trauma because we're all traumatized now we're recognizing in the world how traumatized we are and uh, and nobody's really talking about in utero trauma. We're talking about pre-verbal trauma. We're talking about the traumas of war and the traumas that we experience in this life. But that's not where it started. And my quest has always been get to the core of these tra these these blocks. I call them love blocks, right? Like what stops us from connecting with our heart? What stops us from connecting? you know with our desires the way we need to and their blocks their their survival strategies their traumatized parts and nobody is talking about these issues in this way yeah. and i came across this beautiful modality called identity oriented psychotrauma therapy developed by a dr franz rupert in germany who is still alive it's not from the past he developed this out of working with um bert hellinger who developed family constellations in the 650s and 60s and um it is it is this beautiful melding of both psychology and energy work because it's about the psyche it's we're we're really focusing on the psyche and what's happened with the psyche and the psyche is the thing that we call it we call it the aura we call it our energy we call it heart map energy it, it is the intelligence that surrounds every cell of our being it comes with us when we enter this life it forms and it what it actually does is it it helps us navigate our inner world and from our outer world like how do we navigate the outer world and and how do we deal with it with our inner world and that's why i love the psyche so it's not the mind it's not the brain it's not any other you know word you want to use but it is truly the key to understanding your own trauma and in utero trauma is the key it's where it all started so this is so powerful what you just said to me it was actually interesting and powerful at the same time, separating the psyche from the brain and the mind and seeing it as completely separate. I don't know that I ever heard anybody talk about aura that way. Yeah, because I'm a Reiki master and have been doing Reiki and energy work since I was like 19, I, I've always been so curious about you know, why is the spiritual world so divided and so looked upon as, you know, woo woo, not when 
you know, Einstein himself described it as spooky stuff in the distance. Like they, there is this energy. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I have, I have, um, uh, you know, scientists in my family who were dealing with, you know, the, the was it the the hydron collider or whatever what's it called? You know, the one that they're doing in Switzerland, right? Yeah. The, the, the God particle. That's energy. That's the, that's the mysticism that we talk about. That is pure science. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about it from a psychological point of view, like how are we navigating this world? How are we seeing the world? We tend to, again, always default to, and I hate saying this, but it's the patriarchy version of this, this you know, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the science of the mind. If the science of the mind is the same as woo woo stuff, it's the same as mysticism, it's the same as energy work, it's all the same. But when we understand that the mind isn't the psyche, it's actually the psyche is the thing that helps navigate how we think and how we react, then it makes sense to me because that's the psyche is the one that says, we're in trauma and we don't have the resources. So now we're going to split off a part that is going to be over here so we can continue to navigate life, right? It's not the mind that says it. The mind is just like the CPU or yeah, is it CPU? CPU yeah, yeah, yeah. CPU, yeah, yeah. Uh, Central uh, processing unit. Yeah. The mind is, and the brain is is the, the hardware. The, the mind is like the software, but the psyche is like the internet. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that we don't see. We can't really, well, how does this work? Like if you're, if you believe in the internet and what we're doing here is through this energy of the internet, if you understand that that's a thing, then you absolutely have to accept and understand that, that we are spiritual beings and we're all energy. And we have to look at that as real yeah. when we're talking about navigating trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful. So, okay, so let's go back to, not go back, but continue with the conversation about the trauma in utero and how, okay, so so there is trauma that happens in utero and you and I started talking about it um, that like I have some some knowledge about it. I have some experience of, yeah, it's true. So so what we do with it? What, I mean, let's say I've dug everywhere and I turned every stone from every memory and experience from from the birth the first breath on the first breath on it says how it's coming in like before the breath <laughs> the yeah. before the breath so what yeah. do we do with it so as you know we come into this life we pick our parents it's an energetic thing we're not consciously saying i want parents who are going to beat me up and treat me horribly it's an energy thing it's the energy that you take from life to life right that's why i keep telling my kids do your work because you're just going to do this again in the next life so we bring in this energy we pick our parents we pick our i'm sorry we do we pick our existence and our experience mm -hmm. and so when we come in we pick the parents we we imprint the generational trauma Mm -hmm. through the DNA as the cells are forming and then all of a sudden there's the father there's the mother and it's starting and you're starting to form okay energy is working all of that is part of you mm -hmm. from the very beginning you're able to energetically feel your mother because she is now your home mm -hmm. this is your home so everything that your mother experiences comes through you it's not the placenta it's not what she eats it is energy energy it's vibration so when your mom you might your mother might have had a beautiful um pregnancy but yet she was anxious about something yeah it could it could be just that subtle the anxiety she was maybe fearful one day about something and that is now imprinted in you mm. that is what forms in your nervous system this is and yes. So you just said something, and I want to I want to I wanna like pull it because sometimes I've had these conversations about big things. Like let's say when your mom was pregnant, something happened. Like your father left, and yeah, it was before you were born, but you like you imprinted. But what you just said, it might have been like 
a day, a moment, she got upset and you got imprinted. So she won't even remember. Like you could ask your mom, hey, what happened when you were pregnant? She won't even remember because it was a random Wednesday morning when she couldn't find her shoes and she really, she couldn't find them because she couldn't see over the belly. And all of a sudden she went, you know, she got anxious. You got imprinted. Wow. Exactly. It really can be that subtle. And that's why we have to start by accepting that we are all traumatized mm. we are all traumatized I'm laughing so at it have to deal with each other with kindness and compassion and gentleness not violence and competition and uh you know that's we know that that never works yeah. so so that's that's the thing it can be that subtle but it can also be you know, as as horrible as she married someone who was beating her. Uh, she has a lineage. She she has a, a whole family that, you know, like well, a lot of women around the world who doesn't respect her, treats her like she's horrible. And the fact that maybe she got pregnant out of wedlock. Now she's a prostitute and she's treat she's thrown out of the family and she's, you know, just left to survive on her own. It's like all that stuff gets imprinted on us and we and we come out of it saying our mother was a single mom she was strong and all that is beautiful but it doesn't solve the fact that you were traumatized in utero as you were forming mm -hmm. i i had this visual when you were talking about when the cells are forming i'm very visual so when people talk i and especially lately because my channels are opening up <laughs> i see this beautiful picture of tiny little cells being birthed and in that cell tiny little code that says oh mom had a bad day <laughs> yeah. i have to do something you know we know what's coming up to like a lot of the people pleasing which is i know people are working themselves out of these days it's like it's you know it's, it's a known trauma response wow like how much of that could have been created all the way back in utero when maybe we learned oh I have to not kick mom today because when I kick she gets upset and wow I just exactly <laughs> is that that so, yeah. so what we what happens when when that happens is all of a sudden now we're worried about our mother because she is our home she she is she is the only reason why we're alive and surviving and growing and if she's not okay oh my god now we have trauma we have no resources we have no ability to to figure out how to make her feel better or to leave the situation we're there we're stuck in utero yeah like physically how, yeah physically so how does the psyche manage that type of trauma it splits off we call this the trauma of identity. Mm -hmm. So we, then we split off to survive and stay in that environment, whether it's violent or not. We have to stay in the environment, splits off. Our psyche says, okay, that traumatized part is now going to be separate from us. And now we're going to have another part. Maybe it's a survival part. This is the part that is that says, okay, we're going to just like, you know, just join with our mother. We're going to not make any waves we're not going to kick her we're just going to be quiet yeah for her yeah. approval mm -hmm. we're going to be the best baby in utero so we don't disturb her we don't cause her extra pain or discomfort mm -hmm. and now you have the beginning of trauma and this is the trauma of identity where in order for us to survive we have to identify with her mother we now don't have the ability to say i'm this type of person and i can be like this because i have all this genetic material that says i'm outgoing and i want to kick and i want but our mother's environment in order for us to stay safe in it we have to now dumb ourselves down mm. that's the beginning of anxiety attachment disorder for sure it's beginning of us shutting ourselves down, being people pleasers, um, maybe being the best at whatever mm. we, we are at, like, you know, the high performers, A++ people, you know, super performers, super athletes, or super at your job, um, the most compliant. Uh, and that's where it starts, trauma of identity. So now we don't really have, we don't have the encouragement to develop our own identity mm -hmm. and that's where it starts and then wow. of course it 
birth process is a whole other story. So I know there is some this. Okay. So let's talk about it for a second too, because I know that there is, there is a lot of now studies where, and I know some women choose to to gentle home births because they are, because we're becoming aware of the birthing process makes such a big difference. So do you, do you have any, any wisdom on even connecting to that moment of birthing? Yes. Well, if, if you are pregnant or thinking of being pregnant, you have to accept that this baby is a separate person from you, has already their own personality, and you're tight with this little baby that you're helping develop. And so you're sort of like in a partnership, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna do this together. So the connection really is understanding that they're their own individual being. They're not, they're not, they're not gonna help you live your life vicariously. They're not going to all of a sudden solve your problems. Oh my God, I had a, I had a, I was dating a, a clinical psychologist for a while who actually believed that he needed to have a child in order to transform his life. It was like, what? No, your child is not there to make your life easy. They're not there to um, be your servant, your slave, your duplicate. They are their own personality. So you have to understand that from the very beginning, you're bringing in this life form. So you're a partner. So the best way to connect with your baby from the very beginning, as soon as you know you're pregnant, is of course, commit to making the environment really great, clean, healthy for them, but to start talking to them as if they are already their own little being. And talk to them like, okay, so we're going to go into the doctor's office today. It's going to be a little stressful because they're going to be poking and prodding. And I don't really like that, but that's not you. That's me. So you're going to be okay. Nothing's going to disrupt you and we're going to be fine. This is something we need to do to check you out. Like you need to have those conversations with your baby in utero, like oh, every day. So sweet. Yeah. Oh every day like okay we're we're we've got to work today even though i don't want to and i'm tired that's me don't worry about it i'm going to make sure i have a nap later everything's going to be fine i'm going to eat your favorite food today like you have to connect on that level wow that's so beautiful and oh the children of the future <laughs> are going to have a much different experience so okay so here we are, we are talking about, we're birthing a whole new reality for humanity and there'll be whole new solutions. And I know birthing children will be, will be redesigned as well, even based on all this wisdom that we are now discovering based on, on all this data that we're getting. So what do we do now? Like in, I, I've already been birthed. I can't go back and say, okay, mom, can you be kinder to me? Like my mom was 20 years old when she got pregnant and it was planned and all of that, but I know she was scared and she talks about it. She's like, I was so scared. I didn't know I could do it. And I know a lot of mothers that we're probably in bellies of outside of any other experience. They were probably scared of the birthing. So now here we are, we're talking about birthing a new earth and it's birthing through us. I mean, that's the language that I literally use with in my work. We birthing a new earth. I'm like, oh my God, are we, are we like reconnecting to the trauma of ourselves being birthed? Um, yeah, in a way we are, but we can do it differently this time because we are more awake mm -hmm. to our power. Mm. And, and the reason why we're so afraid of birth, like real pregnancy and birth, is because no one's giving us the full information. Even if we read all the books, we go into the doctor and we assume they're giving us all the information, but they're not. Yeah. They're directing you so that their life is easier. Okay. Uh, yeah. There are so many options now. And so it's so so we have to approach it from that point of view is really do our research, really look at look at like pull away from the thing that you're you're embroiled in, like pull away from it and have a look at it from up here. What's going on? What are my options? Do I need to stay in this dynamic? No, you have so many options. You have choice. In everything that you do now, I know some people are saying, well, I don't have a choice. I've got kids. I have to work. I have to do this. 
you have choice. There's so many ways to make income and wealth and abundance. And we have to remember, we have choice. And again, an example back to the birthing process, I have had three children, the first one, I was afraid, I let the doctor direct me. It was a horrible birth, my son was traumatized, he ended up having to take antibiotics, like the first six days of his life with wow. it was a it was a, a last minute C section, it was so traumatic. Second one, less so because then I understood my options. And I told my doctor, No, we're not doing this test. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. We're going to have a more gentle by the third one. I said, I'm not doing any of that bullshit. I want a midwife. I'm at home in my bed with my family, yeah. nothing else. I refused all tests. And I said, this one is going to have the gentlest experience and birth. And you know, and it shows in all of my children in my relationship, how they navigate the world. You know, thankfully, I'm here to help them still. And when you have children, you're still there, you're still their guide. So you can't just say, okay, bloop, dropping them. And that's the end of that. So you have to de deal with yourself that way. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. as we're going into this new earth, understand, you've been traumatized, the trauma of identity. And then there's trauma of love, right? You might have had a mother who didn't really want you or maybe she wanted a boy or you know maybe she wanted it to be different and maybe she didn't feel love from her mom so she didn't have the facilities she didn't have the resources to show you the love that you needed so you're picking things you're picking a world that is unloving because that's all you know right so we have to go back to the very beginning we have to understand that we have choice we have to understand what our boundaries are. We have to develop self love big time, big time. My first book, how to do self love, get into those practices of self love, go deeper, deeper, keep questioning, keep asking questions like, is this really how I want to live? Is this really the only way I can make money? Mm -hmm. Is this really how is this do I really have to accept that these are my friends that surround me that don't support me and are not loving mm. or constantly maybe disregarding you dismissing you criticizing you well that sounds familiar I had that experience in utero mm -hmm. mm, you're not going to consciously know this you're going to have to do the work to dig it up but you're going to have experiences throughout your life that that are constantly reminding you of that trauma, being dismissed, not having a voice. You don't have a voice here. You don't have say here. Are you picking those environments that are just constantly re-traumatizing you? And then look at your survival strategies that have you've developed that you think are helping you, but they're not. They're keeping you in the trauma loop over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, the, the whole entire time you're talking, Diana, I'm I'm seeing how we all just want to, I mean, I've heard this before, like we all just want to get back into the womb because that's when we felt like things, you know, like we, we think that was the womb was like the safe place, but it wasn't, it was right. never the safe place. <laughs> exactly. But it's what we first knew, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's like, you just like giving me, expanding my perspective because there are aspects of it that I was aware of, but the way you are talking about it right now, I'm seeing how we really do have to go back to the first physical space in which we were created, not just the environment after the first breath, but the physical space in which we were created. And how are we recreating it that right now around us over and over and over again? It, it's so powerful because I, I do believe that the work we are doing right now is healing the trauma we all traumatized i left when you said it not because i'm laughing at trauma but th there is definitely a conversation people have like oh you know i didn't have any trauma because i had a good childhood or their trauma was bigger than mine or you you know you gotta heal your trauma i'm good all these conversations I, it's it's so beautiful that you said just accept that we are all traumatized come from that place so we can be gentle with each other not just ourselves and yes of course that too but then with each other too. So yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's it in a nutshell. We have to accept that we are all traumatized on so many different levels. And when that 
when when you've accepted that, then you can start the work. Because if you're denying it and resisting it and saying, oh, I wasn't trying, but I, I had a great childhood. Really? Yeah. Really? You're consciously forgetting a few things, right? But why is it that you still can't have a really good loving partnership? Why are you divorced three, four times? Mm -hmm. You had a great childhood. And sure, it looks good on paper. Your life looks good on paper. Sure, you've got a great job. You've got all the assets. You know, everything looks good. The house, the cars, the vacations. You got kids in university, you know, but you're still not happy. Why is that? Yeah. You got to go back to the beginning, the first traumas. That's the answer. It's where you'll find all the information and you'll see all the layers of trauma and the split off parts and how you've dealt with it in your life and everything just opens up and it's great it's like then your system settles and in one session like we only work in group right i i do work one-on-one -on -one, um but i love group because it's through the, through the resonance of other people where they can resonate your split off parts and then you can have conversations with them and that's the beauty of this new work where we're not doing the old model anymore you're not going to the psychologist or the therapist or you know why because that puts you in the victim perpetrator dynamic yes always looking at someone to give you the answer to save you to guide you and that is because you have trauma of identity because you're always looking to the mother you're always looking to somebody to help you on some level the mother is the key and i know that i'm a mother and i was like what why are we always to blame <laughs> but the mother holds you the mother contains you she grows you it is through her lineage and we know this genetically it's through the female line yes. where you know where you started and it's that's why we as females are so over, so powerful mm -hmm. right it's a whole we, other conversation that <laughs> whole other conversation but that is that is the 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 beauty of this work is understanding that in that acceptance of the mother environment and the trauma that you experience from the beginning how you can accept that you are traumatized and then your split off survival strategy parts relax mm -hmm. because they're still warriors for you and that's why they're creating those blocks yeah. There's why they're creating the survival strategy of anxiety, depression, uh, you know, dep uh, narcissism, all of those things that we label so well in psychology. Great. But then what do you do with that? Yeah. Then you label people and that's what they are. And that's not the truth. That's not the whole truth. They're more than just their label. So we have to stop with the labels. I'm, I'm a big hate label person, even though I have to use it so people understand. Great. So now you get the context right? Borderline personality disorder. That's like a whole series of things, yeah. right? But in order for us to understand in the psychological world, we have to use these labels. We are beyond these labels. These are just survival strategies. If you understand that that's what's, what's going on here, then there's a, that's the first level of work. Mm -hmm. we, need yeah. to accept that. we have survival strategies and we need to access these split off parts to to, to let them know that everything's okay now. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. We're coming to the end of time and I'm like, oh my God, survival strategy, it's a whole. So I'm a, I'm a trainer in transformation and we do use that term, like you created a strategy to survive and it's, it's so you've survived. So it worked to a degree, but now it's the part that you actually have to bring back and love and accept and reintegrate because without that part. So in a wrap, in a wrap up, I want to put it in a, like, I want to put it in why I loved this puzzle in our conversation that you brought in. I don't believe that we can create a new earth from our broken away parts. The way we create exactly. the new way for humanity is by bringing those parts in and accepting and loving and recognizing them. And that then we can truly as whole create the solutions for a whole new way of life for humanity. Exactly. I love that. That's how we become whole. We don't become whole because we have wealth, a house, a good job, a good relationship. All yeah. those things are great. 
but, but that's not it. We become whole when we bring all these beautiful little wounded parts that need attention back into our psyche mm. and let them know that they're loved, accepted, seen. And then, oh my God, the system just settles. And now, now you can actually go out into the world and do the things you need to do. Yeah. So oh, yeah. beautiful, Diana. Oh, I just love this conversation and where we went. So before we part ways, I know you have a gift, a way for our audience to get into your world, get to know you better and get to know your work. So could you tell us what it is? Yes. And thank you for allowing me to give this gift to the audience. Um, it's my third book. It's called How to Have Good Boundaries. And, it, and it's really um, about uh, creating what is the whole long title? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a practical guide. My books are not just storytelling and I bring in stories and, and client stories so that you can understand. It's about doing, it's about the answers are right there. Mm -hmm. So it's a practical guide for setting healthy limits with a narcissist, because that's the term, yeah. uh, family, your friends and at work. So you have all those different environments where you can create the boundaries, which is where we need to start. Yeah, we have to, we have to understand what's ours and what's somebody else's, and that's the beginning. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a free gift. It's a free copy. It's a free digital copy, free download. Amazing. And I know you have a link. Yes, we do. We have a link below. There is a golden button below the video. Click the button, claim the gift, read the book, apply it because it's practical. I love practical books when I can do something with the information. So apply it in your life so you can be the whole person that you are to create whatever it is you are create for the new earth because I know you are here for a reason. Thank you so much, Diana. It was such a joy to have you in the salon and thank you for bringing in that piece into our conversation. That's so important and crucial. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for inviting me, Anna. Such joy. So make sure that you click the button below, get the book, get into Diana's world and experience it for yourself. There is definitely work we all get to do. We all traumatize. That's like, it's okay. It's like a whole book title. We are all traumatized. That's your next book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good. Make sure you click the gift. Thank you, Diana. And we'll see you at the next conversation. Bye for now.